Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Marvin Bird Show. Here we believe that teachers are leaders, and as a result, we purpose ourselves to equip teachers with the skills and information that they need in order to lead their students to success. That's what we're all about here. So you caught us at the end of a series where we were talking about some research regarding habits of the mind, habits of the mind. And as always, you can find you can find those uh, those sources that I that I cite in these podcasts. You can find those in the description section of of the video of the audio. You can also have that sent directly to you by signing up for our newsletter on the website. That's MarvinBird.com. So we're talking about habits of the mind. That's what we've been talking about over the past three weeks. Now, habits, the the thoughts of your students, that's that's really important. It, it's really important as the as the architect of your environment. It's really important that you you make yourself aware of the thinking that your students have of because it ultimately out of that thinking come their actions. And so I propose to you that if if you're able to if you spend time if you spend time developing a, a culture an environment in in your room that is able to encourage <laughs> encourage students to to drop those bad habits and in 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 their place adopt some some better habits quality habits that are going to lead to success. I submit to you that that's, it's a good experiment. It's a good experiment to try, to try. As always, I tell you, there, there's, there's, no, there's no silver bullet, but there, there's always experiments that we can try. You know, a great teacher, they exhaust all the tools they have in their tool belt. And once they discover those tools aren't working, they get some more tools. And that's why you're here. And I appreciate you being here. So the past three weeks, we've been going through this article from Educational Leadership. It's titled The Habits of Self-Directed Learners. And they cite this research uh, titled 16 Habits of the Mind. And I've been picking out some that I think are important. We, we talked about number one, I just believe that this habit of the mind, students need to be able to apply past knowledge to new situations, apply past knowledge to new situations. That's a great habit to have because that, that speaks to one's ability to, to really acquire knowledge, to acquire knowledge, to really understand so that they can solve a problem, so that they can create something brand new. Because ultimately, that's, this is what I tell young people, is that life is about being able to successfully problem solve, to successfully set a goal and accomplish it. And on the way to accomplishing that goal, you're going to have to solve some problems. And so I think that's the that's the number one that's the number one habit out of this list of sixteen habits. So I shared that with you the first episode. Now today we're going to talk about just one of those habits, and I'm going to give you some some tips regarding that habit. But first, before we get started, before we get started, I want to I want to talk about this. Have you ever been? And, and this is what I, I, I'm asking for you to do. I rarely do I ask for for participation in uh, in these podcasts, but I will, I want to hear it. I think it's I think it's pretty cool to hear uh, about some of these uh, you know teacher rants. I guess you would say teacher rants. I want to hear. I, I want I want to get your. I want to hear about some some epic teacher rants that that you've heard you know just i get it and and you may have you may have given one i know i've gone off on a rant before you know definitely you know res respectfully and you know in in the 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 comfort and safety of of my colleagues you know in the department center just like oh i'm so frustrated let me tell you what's going on you know we've all been there we've all been there teacher rants so, uh, yeah, just I, I'd love for you to share because I'm going to share one with you. I'm going to share um, 
This is a teacher rant story that I came across a while ago and I just bookmarked it because I knew I knew that I wanted to share this with you. Check this out. This one, this one, and you can see this on the screen. This one is titled bring your mm -mm Chromebook. Check this out. Check this out. This is, this is, uh, I, I've cleaned this up. It's, as you can see, this is from uh, Reddit. It's Mark not safe for work because the person they, they went full rant here. They went full rant. They say, I am so mm -mm tired of my middle school kids who don't come to my class prepared. You get a zero and you get to put your head down and be bored. I don't care why you forgot it or didn't charge it or your brother took it. We don't have a mm -mm textbook and all our assignments are online. So the only mm -mm thing you need is the free mm -mm laptop the school loaned you. Now, of course, it, you you know, uh, you know, we're we're leaders here. We're 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 training to be quality leaders. And so we don't go off on a rant like this, uh, you know, laced with profanity, you know, towards the kids. We don't do that. I, obviously, we don't do that. But, you know, the thing that I miss about being a teacher is having, you know, my, my, my group, my colleagues from my department, you know, being able to huddle up with them and just say what's on my mind. I'm frustrated. Let me tell you why. Let me talk to you. Absolutely nothing wrong with that because I, I believe that that's that that's why you that that's that's one of the benefits of having your your team your, your department there with you because they have your back. They get it. They're they're in there with you. They they share some of those frustrations and so. Yeah, th this person was having having none of it. They just they just reached their boiling point and yeah, it happens. It happens. It's it, it's it's definitely it can be it can be frustrating when you're trying to execute your lesson and you just you need you just need students to do what they're supposed to do and then everything is gonna go fine. You can you can execute your lesson except for hey, I don't I don't have a charged Chromebook and now you have to problem solve for that before you can get to your lesson. I don't have to tell you that, but you know how it goes. So I just thought that was um I just thought that was interesting. So this teacher was able to get it off their chest. Uh, username Polar Beer Zero <laughs> Seven. Like no one's gonna know who that is. So they were able to get that off their chest. And so hopefully they're they're in a better place now. But I just I thought that was entertaining. So I'm curious to hear about some of your um, some teacher rants that that you've that you've witnessed yourself. So yeah, just leave a. Leave a comment in, in the comment section. Just tell us, you know, of course, you know, save the, the name, you know, uh, save the names and the school. You can leave that out. It's like, but yeah, I, I just thought that that would be uh, that would be nice uh, to hear about other, other teacher rants. And then I'm sure you'll get a, a lot of teachers around the country, a lot of listeners co-signing on some of those things. So we did that. Now, let's get back to this. We're talking about these 16 habits of the mind. And today I'm going to share with you just one more habit of the mind that I think is it's it's important to and and we're talking when we talk about these habits, we're talking about habits that you can help your students develop. Help them drop those poor habits and add some better habits that are going to set them up for success not only in your class but long after they've left left your class and and you know graduated. It's going to help them in life. So last one I want to share with you is managing impulsivity. Managing impulsivity. Take your time. Take your time. Thinking before acting. Remain calm, thoughtful, and deliberative. How many of you, how many of you have watched students make impulsive decisions? Impulsive decisions, poor decisions, impulsive, poor decisions. Yes, that's that would be everybody. It, it can range from fighting you know just fighting on on an impulse like they didn't most times they didn't wake up and go to school thinking you know what it's, it's a great idea i want to fight you know this is the day i'm gonna fight now that does happen but i think in most cases students they don't 
they don't come to school wanting to fight. There, there's things that eventually push them there, and then they just make that impulsive decision that yes, I'm going to fight. Uh, it also, I've seen it with responding to correction. You know, yeah, you got to know uh, who your students are and how they respond and what kind of correction they respond well to. Definitely. How many of you have been in the situation where you say, hey, Johnny, we please stop talking? And Johnny say, oh, I have all these people in here. You pick on me. I'm not the only one talking. Yeah, you know, there's just all, there's just that that impulse, that that ouch, that 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 that, resp that impulsive response that that escalates things to the point where possibly what was just a simple correction, simple question that could have been handled in the classroom. Now we're possibly talking about Johnny's got to leave the classroom to go talk to the principal. And, you know, that's obviously bad because Johnny's not in the classroom. Johnny's no longer learning. So. And just overall, you know, with different poor decisions, they're, they're impulsive. They're, they're, they're just probably doesn't seem to be a lot of thought, a lot of taking the time, taking a moment to think before they act. How we all we've all seen that with students and i chose this one this last habit to talk about because i really do believe i really do believe that this is this is one of those habits that 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 really helps students to build stronger and better relationships because ultimately and i i tell this to students a lot you know you they they can't do it on their own. They're going to need people along the way to help them, to guide them, to pour into them, to give them feedback, to help them make uh, wise decisions. And so acting on impulse, acting on impulse, that can that can that can pot potentially close doors on students. And, and, and we definitely we don't want that. We don't want that. I have a quote for you. It says, this is from Rob Liano. He said this. He said, before you make a decision, ask yourself this question. Will you regret the results or rejoice in them? I'm going to give that to you again. Before you make a decision, ask yourself this question. Will you regret the results or rejoice in them? The, the level of emotional intelligence to 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 really live to really adopt that habit and and live by that code that's just that's just amazing you know imagine imagine if all of your students live by that code if they adopted this habit will you regret the results or rejoice in them in those in the moments that really really count imagine if your students said wait a second hold up Hold up. This is this is one of those situations where I need to step. I need to take a step back and I need to ask myself, am I going to regret this decision? Am I going to regret this decision? And so it would be a great thing. We would love that. You would love that as a teacher, as a leader. You would love that. But we have to you have to put in the work. You have to put in the work in order to get the student there. Now, again, these are experiments. These are experiments, and I want you to just remember, and you veteran teachers, you know this already, you know that sometimes you're not gonna see the results overnight, but I believe that this, it's, it's, this is a good experiment to try. It's a good goal to have. It's a good focus to have. Helping your students manage impulsivity, encouraging them to take their time, thinking before acting, remaining calm, thoughtful and deliberative now definitely when you look at when you look at this you know it's it's a it's a lot this is a lot more than teaching this is the extra stuff this is the extra stuff but ladies and gentlemen this is the extra stuff that we are being asked to do as teachers present day this is the extra stuff that we are asked to do we are being asked to lead and that's why I'm so glad that you're here. 
getting this information, allowing me to submit these experiments to you because I'm going to give you some things. I'm going to give you some strategies. I'm going to give you some strategies that you can encourage your students to try in order to manage that impulsivity. But before we get to that, what I want to do is I want to submit to you this right here. Take a break and check this out. So this is the this is my website. This is MarvinBird.com, MarvinBird.com. I encourage you a couple things here I want to point you to is you see here we have my blog. Here's my blog. Check out my blog. Bite size professional development each and every day on your own, on your own, ladies and gentlemen, these, these blogs, these blog posts will take you, I would say between two to five minutes, uh, depending on which, which posts you read two to five minutes in order to get through. And so I encourage you to make this a part of your, uh, a part of your, a part of your routine, part of your routine. If you want to just get a, just a little nugget, um, each and every day, maybe during your planning hour, I encourage you to check this check this site out. Posts are very short. So again, that's MarvinBird.com blog. So now what I want to do is I want to give you three strategies, three strategies to manage impulsivity. Now, these strategies come from the Habits of the Mind Institute.org. They're not my strategy. They're not my strategies. They come from Habits of the Mind Institute.org. And again, um, go to MarvinBird.com newsletter to have all of my sources sent to you, or you can look in the description section in order to access those three strategies, help students manage their impulsivity. All right. The first one is star S T A R S T A R star stop. The S stands for stop count to 10. Take a deep breath, take a walk. Again, that's count to 10, stop, count to 10, take a breath, deep breath, and take a walk. And then that T, that T stands for think. What is it about this situation that's causing my feelings? And I like that, I, I really do like that one because again, I, I think that um, at this point, it's about problem solving. It's, a, it's about identifying and then solving that problem and, and getting getting yourself out of it. So thinking, what is what is it about this situation that's causing my my feelings? Being aware of it, because once you're aware, then you can really get into the problem solving. And then the A stands for act. What actions can I take to relieve these things in yeah. problem? Now I have to act. What's the solution? Finding solutions, finding solutions. Remember what I talked about successful people. They're able to solve problems on the way to their goals. And then the R stands for reflect. Was this a good solution? What insights have I gained? Really being able to look back and assess what happened as opposed to just living aimlessly just going through the motions because when when i believe that when one lives their life like that where they have no there's no goal and it's your job to help students become goal focused right when because when one lives without a goal in mind they're just aimless there's there's no focus then you know impulsivity there, there's really nothing there's nothing wrong with that because there really is, there's no direction. We weren't going anywhere anyway. So it feels good. Why not do it? So that's star, stop, think, act, reflect. Number two, number two, sodas, sodas, S-O-D-A-S. -S. Check this one out. So the S in sodas, the first S stands for situation. What? Where and why is this happening that produces my feelings? What, where, and why is this happening that produces my feelings? And the O stands for options. It's very similar to star options. What are my options for actions to take? 
really engaging the brain. Let's think this through. Let's solve this problem before we give into making a decision off of a feeling, off of an impulse. So the D stands for disadvantages. What disadvantages are there with each of these options? Again, getting off of those feelings and that impulse, studying the situation, taking in that data and processing it to come up with a, a better solution, a better way to act. So A stands for advantages. What are what advantages are there with each of these options? What are the advantages? And this one, you can tell this one is taking a little bit more time. So if you have a little bit more time with a student, you can really go through this and even draw it out on a whiteboard right in front of the student, get them off their feelings. And then the other S stands for solutions. What is the best solution for me to take? What is the best solution for me to take? And as you're going through this with the student, have them start. Hey, Johnny, which one do you think is best? As we put these out, which one would you do? You think we should star this one or should we just leave this one with no star? Which which one? What do you think? Getting them talking, getting them processing the information, ranking each solution from from one to three or whatever it is from most desirable to eh, not really feeling this one. All right, you get the point. And they also shared this quote from Thomas Jefferson that I wanna share with you. He said, when angry, count to 10 before you speak. If very angry, 100. And I really do believe, I've just seen this take place so often with students. You know, it could, and a lot of times it happens when, when they're being corrected, like they're, they're just like, they've just got this feeling that's just like, mm, stop talking to me. And, um, you know, oftentimes I, I've seen it where that, that, that starts to escalate things, um, because they have, they have such a reaction to being corrected. Like if, if, you know, and I, I say this and this, this is. This is a fundamental truth. Nothing should interfere with the teaching and learning that's going on in the classroom. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And it's unfortunate um, that, uh, you know, you do have students who who just like it, it's it's difficult to find a, a, a positive way. And it, uh, it's not impossible, but it, it's just challenging sometimes to find a way to correct their behavior in the midst of you having to teach that's that's unfortunate and it does happen it does happen but i'm saying this nothing should interfere with the teaching and learning that's taking place in the classroom and so it, it if it has to be handled outside the classroom so be it because nothing should interfere with the teaching and learning that's taking place especially if and I know because you're here, you're doing the right thing. You're trying to respectfully redirect students so that all students can learn, including the student who needs correct correction. I know that you're doing the right thing. So please keep that in mind. I know you are. All right. So I'm going to share with you the third. I'm going to share with you the third strategy. But first, before I get to that, what I want to do is I want to share this with you. MarvinBird.com. Again, MarvinBird.com up. Uh, up at the top here, we see a tab labeled support the message. And to those of you who are doing this, I thank you so very much because what happens, ladies and gentlemen, is we've had people through just by going to Amazon before they go to Amazon straight before they go to Amazon, they'll go through MarvinBird.com, support the message, and then they'll click this link right here. Just this this link right here this link right here, and that'll take them to the amazon.com app on their phone or the website if they're on the computer. And you have all rights and privileges to purchase anything and everything that's on the site. But whenever you stop and use this link before you go there, we get a little commission here. And that really does help to, to keep, keep up with the pace of pumping out content and it just it does help to spread this message. And that's just one of three ways on this site that you can use that you can um, 
one of three ways that you can help support this message. And I just really appreciate those of you who have who have partnered um, with me and, and the work that I do to help spread this message. It's an important message. And so thank you so much for those of you who are doing that. And thank you to those of you who may be considering that. And I encourage you to do so. Thank you so much for partnering with me. All right. So the last the last strategy I want to share with you, last strategy I want to share with you when it comes to helping students manage that impulsivity, manage impulsivity. This is name it, reframe it, tame it. And you'll notice that these are they're, they're pretty similar in regards to what they're trying to do. They're trying to get students to think, trying to get students to think. And then trying to get them to analyze information so that they can make a better decision than they were just really out of instinct that they were going to make. It's definitely better when you take your time and think. All right. So name it, name it, reframe it and tame it. Name it. Identify situations where your buttons might be pushed and what is the root cause for your anger? Again, here, I think this is great. Students, they need to know themselves. And when they get in the practice of this, this is really, really important. Really important for them to know themselves because I believe once they have a better idea of who they are, then the mission, their personal mission and vision is a little bit more clear. And so then they're less apt to give into impulsivity because they realize, whoa, I can't do that. I'm, I'm trying to do this. If I do, if I do that, like, I, like my, there's a part of me that really wants to do this just out of instinct, but no, that's going to take me from my goal. So name it, reframe it, believe that you can change the way you react when others push your buttons, seeing it as an opportunity to learn about yourself, what troubles you and how you can avoid these situations in the future. Okay. Again, very similar to the previous two. This is name it, reframe it, and then let's look at tame it. Tame it. Really take control of the situation. It says use one of these strategies to keep your emotions under control. And this is very simple. You've seen a lot of this before. Number one is just simply buy time by leaving the situation for a while. Step back. Take a step back. And then uh, twos, count to ten. And then number three, just take, take a deep breath. Like these are, these are all so simple and so similar, but yet we've got students out there that they, they need these strategies. They need these strategies or they need you as their teacher, as their leader to help them with the consistency of applying these strategies because they, they are so simple. And I think that I think that what happens sometimes is we hear about, you know, solutions and strategies and experiments, and they just sound so simple that we decide, ah, that's probably not gonna work. That's not that's that's not really difficult to understand. It's it's not there's not a lot of moving parts to that. That's that's not too complicated, and therefore that's not going to work. But I think the biggest challenge with, with these simple strategies is simply consistency. It's consistency. And that's why we encourage you here to be leaders, to use leadership in your classroom to help your students adopt these habits. This is just the way we do things in this environment. That's the culture of your classroom. And I think that in the end, your students are going to be better for it because once they start adopting these things, they're solving problems before they even come up. And so that means that you've got more time to teach. You've got more time to teach. You've got more time to reteach. And isn't that a beautiful thing? Yes, it is. Well, that's it for today. I thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I appreciate you so very much. And until we meet again, please don't forget that teachers are leaders.